Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to my garden. I just realised that it's almost a year to the day since I put out my very first video. I think it was um, 2nd of February 2023. So um, lots happened in my garden since then, not least of all my beautiful new greenhouse. Um, so yes, that very first video was shot in the little bit of border underneath my kitchen window. So I thought um, it needs some attention now. So I thought I would do this video um, on that border. Um, so I've got a beautiful new climbing rose that I'm going to plant. Um, I'll talk about what plants I've taken out um, and I'll try and find out on the editor how I can put in some stills of what the border looked like because um, I have taken out a couple of large shrubs there. So just before I get started um, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's watched my videos and thank you to all the lovely people who've left lovely comments. Um, it's been really encouraging. And for anybody who's new to the channel, my name's Diane. I live up here in the, the northeast of England. We, we are right on the coast. So um, my garden is made up of a lot of different areas. Some of them are complete shade, never see the sunshine at all. Others are south facing borders. So I'm hoping that it's got some interest for everybody. Maybe you can sort of relate to an area of my garden. Right, so um, it's a bit nippy, but it's nice and dry. So I'm going to don my gardening gloves and I'll take you around and I'll show you the border that I'm going to work on today. Right, so this border here, it was actually the first um, border that I worked on in the first ever video. So if you have a look at the first video, you would see that I had a very large shrub here. Um, that I didn't know the name of, and it didn't really do much. So I've taken that out, and in its place here, I'm going to leave that patch of earth, fill it up, level it off, but I'm going to leave that bit of earth because I'm going to plant lupins in there. Um, and what happened was this shrub that was here kept all of the south-facing sun off the back of the border there um, so now that it's gone we'll see a lot more of the plants because I know I've got Solomon seal and um, Campanula and everything in there um, and it was always just blocked by the shrub so that stick sticking up there is phlox pink phlox and then I'm going to put the climbing pink rose behind it this patch here is a very tall white campanula. Then we've got Linaria, foxgloves, a big patch of Sarah Bernhard peony here, which goes, oh, must be three to four foot tall. And a big patch of Sarah Bernhard peony here, um, similar height. Then in this, this tub here, I have a beautiful clematis, clematis early sensation. And it's sat in this tub for two years because I can't decide whether I want it to remain here or whether I want that to go in the back garden. So I'm not going to move it now because it will be flowering shortly. Um, but I'm definitely going to make a decision this year as to where to put it. And then you can see the way the wind has blown all of the um, pots and everything that I tend to leave lying around the garden. What I do is I work, I work hard in a border and then I run out of energy and I don't tidy up after me. So that's another thing I'm going to do this year. I'm going to be much more organised. So I'm going to clear this area up, take all the pots out, get up, rid of all the leaves, making sure I'm very gentle and that there are no sleeping hedgehogs in there. Um, this is just grass. I'll do a little bit of weeding here. I've already planted loads of foxgloves behind there. You can see the buds on the, um, the hydrangea are coming out. And then... <laughs> 
it's only this year that I've noticed this rhododendron here um, and a funny story behind that so when we moved into this house in 2008 I kid you not all that was here in this garden were um, these massive trees and the rest was laid to lawn and the very first plant that I ever planted was that rhododendron and it just it was in the wrong place never did much but I remember being so thrilled when I had put my first plant in the garden so anyway a couple of years ago uh, we dug it out and planted it elsewhere in the garden and I thought that was it and then I looked out this winter and obviously I've left a bit of root and I've got another rhododendron growing in amongst the um, the hydrangea that's a beautiful white hydrangea so he's very welcome he looks nice and healthy we'll see if he flowers this year if he doesn't I'll move that bit um, of rhododendron and then here just careful what I'm standing on here. This is a beautiful sort of apricot coloured rose. Um, that someone bought as a gift for my granddaughter's christening. Um, and we've planted it here. She's 12 now. So this rose is 12 years old. Um, so what I'll do and what he does is he grows nice and tall and then he sort of spills over into this obelisk and, and the clematis and at, that acts as a, a support for him but as with all roses I can prune him down now right to these stems here um, and it does them the power of good right I'm caught on the rose now right so we'll get going and I'll tidy this border up and then I've got some beautiful um, tree bark and I'm going to mulch, mulch the whole area and then that border's done. Right, so here we are at my cart. This is where I keep all the plants that I buy throughout the month um, that need to be put out into the garden. So... Last year in the sale, I bought two climbing roses, um, and one of them is this one. It is um, Galway Bay. And I've done some research, and this one is a vigorous growing plant. Um, let's have a look. Salmon pink with a slight fragrance, and it grows 10, 10 to 12 foot tall. So if we have a look at where I want this one to grow, which is I'm going to plant it in this patch of the, the garden here. This is south facing this border, nice and sunny, but only for part of the day um, until about sort of one o'clock in the afternoon. But I've got um, a clematis that grows up here anyway and a clematis that grows the other side. But then we have this lovely bit of trellis that goes up there to a single story extension. So I'm thinking that this climbing rose will eventually climb up here. I can train it along the top of the fence there, which will look gorgeous. And also up and along the top of the window there. Because the window is open from the bottom there out over. Um, so it'll be lovely if the roses hang down there. So I had a choice of Galway Bay or this one, which is shot silk. And this one grows a bit taller. So I'm gonna keep this one for the front of the house. That'll be a, a video for a different day. Right, I've been on the RHS website um, and I've learned that when I plant this rose, this graft union here, which is where the cultivar joins the rootstock, where the branches come out of, um, 
you mustn't bury that because because it can encourage um, rose dye back. So when I put this in to the ground, it's going to be, I'm going to make sure it's still at that level there. And then I'm going to prune it back. And um, we are into February now. So it said uh, don't plant in the middle of winter. Um, but do plant before the rose starts growing. So this, I think, is a perfect time. Right, so I'm just being very careful where I stand so as not to crush any little plants or bulbs coming up. Right, so you can see the, the rose seems to be going naturally backwards um, and not forwards. That, look, that bit there looks like it's got a bit die back, so I can cut that off. So I don't want the plant to grow out that way. I do want it to grow backwards, so I think I'm going to put him there. Oh, he's going to look gorgeous. Right. This is a lovely spade. It was my late father-in-law's, and it's nice and narrow and deep. Just perfect for a rose. So what will happen is this phlox will all come up here, and it'll, um, it'll sort of fill in. The bot where the bottom of the rose is bare. Right. I'm going to check the height because uh, again there's some weeds in the top of the pot we'll get rid of them right I think that's actually about perfect because remember I haven't got to bury that that rootstock or whatever it's called right I'll get my compost Right, so I'm going to get some nice compost out to put in the, air in the bottom of the, the hole where I'm going to put the rose. So that's my compost. Oops. Because roses are hungry plants. And this is like the, the high energy food for them. So I'm going to mix this into the base of the hole and then I'm going to mix some with the soil that I've dug out the hole which I'm then going to use to backfill the rows. Right, that should do. And tip that in, well part of it. And then mix the compost in with the soil that's still in the bottom of the hole. Tip a bit more in. And I really did want to get out here early in the season because it's amazing once the temperatures start to rise a bit, how quickly the garden springs to life. And before you know it, you can't get back in your border without damaging loads of stuff. Right. So I'm mixing that up well. Because the, the homemade compost would have been just far too rich um, for the rose. Break up the very bottom of the the root ball there. There we go. You're gonna love it here in this garden. I'm not sure whether I should be slightly 
squidging that down and then I'm going to mulch around it with bark and prune it right down to these forks in the stems there. Give it a good drink, a good soaking in so that all the soil gets around those new roots. Water around here as well because I know for a fact there's a clem couple of clematis here. Brilliant, leave that to soak in for a bit. And then when I put the mulch on the top, it'll keep that moisture in, but it'll also protect that um, root ball from any extreme colds that we might still get, which we probably will get. Right, so what I'm doing with all these leaves is I'm just putting them in an old compost sack and the leaves are wet, they need to be wet. If you pick your leaves up and they're dry, just put some um, a watering kind of water in. And then what you do is you scrunch the sack close like that. You could clip on it or something. Put some big holes um, in it to let water drain out and then store that somewhere around the back of a shed or a greenhouse just out of sight for a year. And when you open it next year, this time next year, you'll have lovely, dark, rich leaf mould. It just looks like soil. It doesn't actually feed your plants, but it really improves the texture of the soil. It makes it more free draining and it looks beautiful as well so I've checked all this for um, hedgehogs if you come across any little nests or anything just put the leaves back where you found them all right you want as much air circulating now as possible so you'll have seen me pruning that tall rose down to a stump like that. Um, some people say, oh, you have to prune to an outward facing bud or, or whatever. If you don't know what you're doing, um, I have it on very good authority that you can't kill a rose and you can only do good by pruning it back early spring. So yes, I've just chopped these all back. I do this every year and every year comes back bigger and better. 
Now, what I'm not going to chop back are the heads off this hydrangea, even though they're dead. I wouldn't prune these heads off until sort of late March because if you get a strong frost, the frost will land on the head there. And if you look down the stem to there, those are the new buds that that dead head is protecting. So if, if you'd cut, I can't do it in one hand, but if I'd cut this off, this dead head off there, these buds would be exposed as these ones are here. These have, we've had lots of strong winds and obviously the dead heads have blown off these ones. So, but it's still got quite a lot of dead heads there. So I'm not going to bother um, weeding too much in here because all of this green that you can see there is a creeping sort of campanula and I never get rid of that. Um, it is quite pretty, but it's very invasive, but the other plants can hold their own against it. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mulch it and what I have here is this most beautiful mulching material. So we had a tree taken down um, in December and then we paid extra and had the stump ground out so that I could put um, a cold frame in its place and this is what was left of the ground stump so it's ground up tree bark. So I'm going to mulch this whole border um, and then we'll be done. And you can see I've got loads of bulbs coming up all over here. Every day I come out and they seem to have grown another two or three inches. So you just have to be careful when you're mulching um, around your bulbs. You don't want to cover the tiny ones up. Throw some mulch around that newly planted rose there. And mulching not only makes your border look beautiful. Um, one of my um, subscribers has just said it just makes it look as though you've turned over all your soil and when really you haven't. Um, and I have got a video out on mulching. So I'll put the, the link to that. And what mulching does, no matter what thickness it is, it depends on what you're mulching with. If you're mulching with homemade compost, which this is a mix of homemade compost and ground tree stump, um, the compost will feed the plants. If it's just tree bark or um, leaf mould, it'll get dragged down over the, the course of the year by the worms and it will open up the structure of your soil. This border has had a good weed. See, I've covered some bulbs up there with the mulch, but they'll be okay because they're quite, they're about four or five inches tall, these. I'll bring the camera over to show you how I'm mulching in between them. Right. So here's a beautiful foxglove there and these are all my lovely tulips and daffs coming up there. So I'm going to just mulch by hand and drop the mulch in amongst them. These are wallflowers. It's just a bit of old twig. That's it. If you've got any plants, like I told you, the stick over, now where's my finger? The stick over there is a phlox, that there. Um, he's not going to come up for a while. So the fact that I've covered him with mulch, it really won't bother him. And I've got a beautiful tall white campanula in this border. It's gorgeous. I think there's a, um, hopefully still alive, a lupin in this area. And there's a beautiful aqualesia there. I 
did whiz along yesterday and gave the fence a quick coat of paint because it had gone sort of green and mouldy at the bottom. And anybody who's watched my videos knows that I am partial to a, a bit of painting. I do love painting. I just think if you can manage, it just really makes your garden really smart. So particularly if you're a, a gardener like me, where you love to fill every bit of soil with a plant, if your hedges or your fences are a bit um, scratchy looking, you know, they haven't had a trim or they're a bit, um, they're needing a coat of paint, then that combined with a very overstuffed border can make the garden look a bit chaotic whereas if your fences are as smart as you can make them the hedges are trimmed then it acts as a, a nice sort of calming backdrop to the garden that's what i think anyway to be honest i don't think anybody else notices except me they just look at the gorgeous plants but I think gardeners are like that, aren't we? We're always looking for what can be improved. Right, now I'm throwing this mulch at the back because I can't get over there. Or rather, I can't be bothered to get over there. And I know I'm not going to harm anything. There's some foxgloves there. But the thickness that I'm throwing on won't bury the foxgloves and it'll just settle round the roots of the hydrangea and the rose there we go really losing the light now Right, so that's it. We've come to the end of the day now. We're really losing the light. I think you can still see. Um, but that's another border all done and ready for spring. So that's it, everyone. Another job done. I'm really pleased with what I've got done today. Um, it didn't take all that long, but um, I can take that off my list tonight. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, um, take care, stay warm and here's to spring. <laughs> See you next time, bye.